So I'm reviewing the Church of Ruby Road before my proper review of the Giggle. What's my rationale for that? Say it with me, folks. It's more of a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. Anyhow, hello, Dan here from DC's Media, and welcome to another Who Review. I didn't expect to be doing this, but welcome to my Who Review of the 2023 Christmas special, The Church on Ruby Road. <laughs> Now this is the first time that you'll properly hear my thoughts on this episode in a video format, but anyway, this is the first Christmas special that we've had in six years since Twice Upon a Time. Six years it's been. This episode is also our first proper episode with Shuti Gatwa as the 15th Doctor, even though he made an appearance in the final act of the third David Tennant special, The Giggle. And we're also, so we're seeing him for the first time properly, and we're also seeing Millie Gibson as new companion Ruby Sunday, and it's, I think that was the main thing that we were all looking forward to in this episode, is the main introduction to New Doctor, New Companion. I mean, Christmas specials, they have a reputation for being just light-hearted fluff, and to be fair, this episode is kind of that. You know, the plot with the goblins, it's not the most fleshed out ever, but ultimately, it's just a bit of fun, and it's setting up these new characters that we're going to follow for the next couple of seasons, I imagine, if not more. And this episode, I think, in that regard, succeeds with flying colours. Obviously, we did see Shooting Out Warriors 15 in the sort of final act of The Giggle, and he made a very good first impression there, in my opinion, but he did have a lot of other things around him. You know, David Tennant, Catherine Tate, Mel, the toy maker, all this crap around him. And I think he, you know, did a fine job in that. And the things I really liked about him in that, you know, his fun, his charm, his humour, but also his sense of wisdom and a real caring personality. All of those positive attributes are magnified tenfold in Church of Ruby Road. I think he's fantastic here. He's immediately for me better than Jodie and probably controversially I think I prefer him to David Tennant. In terms of the other do new who doctors like Eccleston, Smith, Capaldi, I mean they're like all my favourite doctors pretty much with along with Tom Baker so you know it'll probably take a bit for Shooty to get to that level but I mean I'm loving what Shooty's doing with the role already and I just he was such a. He says he has such an affability to him, and it feels it feels effortless. It feels so charming and just his confidence. It's brilliant to see, and the, the humor cracks me up. But also, there's a sense of wisdom and caring, as I say, especially when it comes to characters like Ruby, like Ruby's um, adopted mother. I can't remember the name of right now. I'll, I'll double check. But from the word go, it's a bit like Matt Smith. It just feels so so well rounded already, and I, it's a joy to see. And then also we have Ruby Sunday played by Millie Gibson, who, again, I thought was fantastic here. And there was such a... She felt ordinary. I know a lot of... The whole thing of Capone's oh, they're so relatable. Here, I think Millie Gibson kind of got it down to a T. I think there was certain nuances and little quirks to the performances that didn't feel overdone, but just made her feel genuine and believable. But the whole mystery with her, you know, not knowing who her parents are and where she comes from, and how that kind of links to the Doctor with the Timeless Child. And I like how Russell is actually doing things with that thing that Chibnall set up, which he Chibnall didn't do anything with. But Russell is using that to kind of further the characters and kind of connect them. It just makes it feel a little more worthwhile. I can't believe I'm praising that plot point, but the fact that he, Russell is doing things with that, it's great. But yeah, I think that gives him the whole stuff with her adopted family and the foster care. I think that was an interesting angle to take. It was something a bit more, a bit fresh. And the chemistry and the dynamic between Shooty and Millie, from the word go, it's bang. I mean, from just interviews with them and the little videos on YouTube that we'd seen before, I, I already got like a sense of friendship and genuine chemistry. It's a bit like a, you know, a four and Sarah Jane, a seven and Ace, a ten and Donna, that kind of just electric chemistry. I think it's already doing really well. There's an immediate spark with the two of them, and I think they just play each other off each other, sorry very well but also when with the supporting cast like Carla who's is um Ruby's adopted mother and uh, Anita Dobson's character she was uh, Miss Flood I think she's called she was a nice little uh, character side character stand. again just these little character interactions I just think everyone plays off each other the whole cast plays it off each other really well and it just makes it feel so believable and I think yeah it adds to the believability another thing I want to talk about now is the sort of the mood and the atmosphere kind of I think many of the production values I mean I, I praise the production values with like the Star Beast, for example, I think that was a really well made episode. And I, overall, I just think the production values of like this one, I think, were fantastic. I think the cinematography was really effective, the colours really popped, like, especially in those sort of, I guess, flashback scenes with the church on Christmas and the baby Ruby Sunday. 
I think the way that they're shot with the snow, I think it's very well done, very distinct visually from the present day stuff. But I think the you know, cinematography is quite dynamic, just the location. I think it's just, there's something quite crisp about it all. This was directed by Mark Tondori, who I think did some in episodes in series 11. I think he did the Ghost Monument, which that was a brilliant directed episode. And Rosa, again, another great episode in terms of like visual style and aesthetic. And that, that's what this episode has. It has a real style to it. It just creates a great mood. And I mean, uh, Murray Gold's music as well, I think helps that. I think his score, I think is very effective at certain points. And I do quite like um, 15's theme. I think it's, now that I'm hearing it in the episodes, I think I'm, I'm really quite liking it. I do not say it extends to the goblin creatures as, you know, uh, antagonists of the story. I think they're quite good. Especially the main one, who looks a bit, bit Jabba the Hutt-esque, I think. They're pretty cool. The, the main one, the you know, the main kind of goblins, they weren't the best looking things, but they weren't the worst. I mean, I think this is where we kind of move on to the whole plotline with the goblins as the main threat of the story. I didn't... It's, it's a Christmas special. Ultimately, the antagonists are not the main point of the episode. They're just... It's just white hide fluff for the kids to, you know, goggle at and just go, Oh, that looks, that looks cool. That looks scary. You know, there's not a lot to them. Uh, there's some cool ideas here. And there. I like the kind of playing with look and coincidence and how they kind of feed that into their plans and whatnot. But overall, they're, they're fine. They're just perfectly disposable Doctor Who monsters. There's, again, the whole goblin plotline, there's not a lot to it. The, the main focus of the episode was about setting up 15 and Ruby Sunday. That was the main focus of the episode. And that it succeeded with. But this extra goblin stuff, didn't. you know, it's fine. They also have a little musical number with the Goblins, which is pretty cool. I'm interested to see what kind of musical numbers will be in um, series, I say, I said I was going to say series 14, it's going to be season one now, which is a bit irritating, but I'm in Shooty's first season, what kind of musical numbers we'll see, because I thought this one was, was, it was a fine song, I think it was well, you know, well written, well, you know, vocals are solid, but it was a bit too squeaky clean for like these grotesque looking creatures. It just didn't seem right. But then when Shooty and Millie start singing, I thought that was really cool. It was a really nice moment as well with the whole the two plot lines coming together with the whole, obviously, the goblin plot line. They kind of rely on luck and coincidence. And then you have, there's a scene with uh, Ruby, Carla and the Doctor. Obviously, Ruby is adopted. The Doctor doesn't know where they're from. They're, they, you know, they're kind of both don't know where they actually come from. And that sort of coincidence that's you know another coincidence and i like how the character stuff and the goblin stuff kind of collides in a way it, it, it feels quite organic and that was a nice way to tie together the two plot lines i wish they kind of we woven sort of two narratives a bit better but that was a good way to do it and i think if they just channel that a bit more probably would have made the goblin stuff more worthwhile but in conclusion it's a quite simple episode it's sort of your bog standard doctor story but done very well with strong production values a strong mood and overall strong character work and that's you know, it's like this almost like the building blocks for the new era, which I am looking forward to. And also the, the trailer for the, the you know, the next time trailer, well, actually the next time trailer, but the trailer for the upcoming season, there's some, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Beatles episode, that looks pretty sick. But overall, the story, this story just felt very fresh. After the giggle, which was so bogged down, I think, in pomp and circumstance, and so much was happening in the episode, it kind of buckled under the weight of all it had to do. I think this was a really nice, almost a palette cleanser in a way, and just set the stage really well for this upcoming era that I am really excited for, and I'm so excited to see what Shooty and Millie are gonna bring to the table. And I, I have, I do have faith, and yeah, I have faith. Now, unlike the other Who review videos, I don't have any sort of things. I don't have any like viewer responses. I don't have any view figure data or anything like that. I, I, I'm just kind of doing this now because I, 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 I was kind of enthused to talk about Doctor Who again and I think that's what I want you to take away from these recent RTD stories even though some of them aren't the best. The Star Beast, not the best story in the world. The Giggle, not the best story in the world. Ultimately, I'm having fun with them. You know, the Star Beast and this one, I think example for that, I just had a real, it was just fun and a real energy but still had strong production and just, I enjoyed them and that's something I felt was lacking with the Chibnall era at times. I just kind of felt like I came out of episodes thinking it was good. This kind of consistent fun energy, this real fun energy, wasn't as consistent in Chibnall's Who as it has been for these past specials and hopefully with um, season one, as we have to call it. But yeah, um, what do you think of the Church of Ruby One? I want to know what you think of the episode because I don't really haven't, haven't really explored the fan consensus yet. So take care, Merry Christmas, and see you later.